We've all heard that branding is important, but with so much content out there about brands, it can be hard to figure out exactly what a brand is, let alone how to come up with a solid one for your business. Is the brand your logo? Is it the fonts and colors you use? Is it your website? Is it your messaging? Here's a hint. It's all of the above. Today, I'm sharing how to create a strong visual identity that appeals to your ideal clients and makes them want to work with you. And if you want to jumpstart when it comes to branding, check out our line of premium website templates and semi-custom brands at daveandkrista.com shop. Hey friends, I'm Krista from Davey and Krista, where we help you build a business that reaches more people, generates more leads, and builds a business you love. In today's video, we're going to be talking about creating a visual brand identity. But before we get started, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel to get updates about any future videos we release. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those below. Okay. So let's get started. When it comes to a brand, we always recommend starting with your audience. Ask yourself, who does your brand serve? The best brands choose a very specific person and serve that person well. Even major brands like Apple and Target don't try to appeal to everyone. Some people are always gonna be upscale boutique shoppers, and some people are always gonna be Microsoft people. I don't know why, but they are. So when we're working on a brand, we ask our clients to think about a very specific person. We have our clients think about where this person shops, what kind of art decorates their walls, how they spend their free time, maybe where they work, how old they are, the amount of disposable income they have. The more specific that you can be about this person, the easier it's going to be to create a brand that appeals to them. And if you want to check out some of the questions that we ask our design clients in our branding questionnaire, there's a link below to grab our branding questionnaire questions. The first thing that we put together for our clients that you can also do on your own is creating a mood board. A mood board isn't necessarily something that you would ever share publicly, but it can be really helpful when it comes to creating your visual identity. We often use mood boards to generate visuals for a brand, to help source fonts, and to pull together color palettes. When we're gathering images for a mood board, we try to stick to visuals that appeal to that ideal client that we talked about before. We try to stay away from other designs and stick to images of clothes, interior design, locations. A lot of the questions that we had our clients answer about their ideal client can actually help us source images. So we'll pull images from specific clothing brands or if they said that their ideal client would spend their vacation time in Greece, we'll grab images of Greece and then we'll start putting all of those images together in a visual mood board that kind of starts to hint at colors and overall look and feel. Once you have that mood board together, you can even start to eye drop colors and use those to create a color palette. And if you want to grab our free mood board template, there's a link below to download the free Photoshop file. Next up, logo. The logo is probably one of the first things we think about when we think of branding. So it's the swoosh in the Nike logo. It's that like hidden arrow in the FedEx logo. A strong logo can unite all the other elements of a brand, but that doesn't mean that the logo itself has to be super clever or a work of art. Think about everything that anthropology has accomplished with a simple typographic logo. They might have a really simple logo, but their brand is very aspirational. And that's in part thanks to all of the other elements that we'll talk about later in this video. Depending on your skill level, a logo might be something that you outsource to a designer, or you could create something simple and typographic for yourself. And we have a tutorial below, or you could start with one of our semi-custom brands. While it can be tempting to think that your entire brand rests on an amazing logo, we've never found that to be true. I always recommend starting off simple and giving your brand room to grow. If you've gone through a mood board activity, you might have created your own color palette. A color palette is a group of several colors that is used consistently throughout your general online and brand presence. A consistent color palette helps make brands more identifiable. Think about Target Red or Southwest Airlines blue, red, and gold. And if someone were to hand you a little teal box with a white ribbon, I bet you would know exactly where it came from. Ideally, a color palette should appeal to your brand's ideal client and be an overall extension of your brand. Pay attention to the colors that you choose and the overall feelings that they evoke. Brighter colors tend to communicate youth and energy, whereas softer colors tend to communicate a more high-end look and feel. You've probably realized by now that every single element of your brand carries a deeper meaning. The same is true when it comes to fonts. Thinner fonts with serifs on them tend to be more high-end and upscale, whereas sans-serif fonts tend to be more casual and youthful. Likewise, using all uppercase letters tends to make your text feel a little more formal and elegant, and a mixed case of letters or all lowercase letters feels more young 
young and casual. Tiffany's and Claire's both sell jewelry, but I bet you could guess from the logos which one is going to be more expensive. When it comes to choosing fonts, try to keep them consistent with your logo, and I recommend limiting the fonts that you choose. A good rule of thumb is one serif, so the fonts with the little feet on them, one sans serif, and one display font per brand. And a display font could be something like a script. We talked a bit about imagery when we discussed mood boards, but I think it's important to emphasize that imagery should be consistent throughout your brand. Ideally, if you have a headshot on your website, it should match all of the other images on your site. So if you are a photographer who shoots light and airy, you wouldn't want to have a dark and moody headshot of yourself on your website. You want everything to flow seamlessly. The types of images you share on social media, your website, and print materials and emails all should look and feel the same and in an ideal world they may even carry some of your brand colors when it comes to creating a website if you've thought through all of the other elements that we've already discussed colors fonts images your logo it should be easy to pull them together into a site whether you're working with a designer or working on your website by yourself your website should almost feel like an extension of your mood board when we're working on customizing website we generally start with customizing the colors and fonts first then adding images and then and getting into the details of copy. We actually have another YouTube video that dives pretty deep into that process, and so we'll link that below. When it comes to your brand's visual identity, I can't stress enough how important it is to be consistent. For example, if you're gonna send your clients a welcome gift, it's important to make sure that the gift you send matches the aesthetic of your brand. So for example, a newborn photographer whose brand is light and airy, and whose clients value timeless classic images, who value less is more, and investing in high quality pieces probably wouldn't want to just drop ship a colorful baby toy from Amazon. Maybe instead you choose a beautiful coming home outfit that is kind of an investment piece. Or maybe you choose a really well-made baby toy from someplace like Restoration Hardware. If I were wrapping that gift, I would wrap it in beautiful wrapping paper with a hand-dyed bow and a handwritten note on thick cardstock, and then send that to my client. The same is true when it comes to sharing on social media, sharing your pricing, sharing any sort of printed collateral. You wanna make sure that the colors and fonts and all of the design elements that you use anywhere that your brand appears all fit with each other. In this video, we focus on creating a visual brand, but hiring a copywriter to help you craft the messaging of your brand can also be a really important step when it comes to making your brand feel cohesive and really target your ideal client. All right, there you go. The exact visual elements you need to think about when it comes to creating a strong visual identity, appealing to your ideal client, and booking more work. If you want to dive more deeply into the visuals of branding, check out the link below to grab our Anatomy of a Brand Guide. It's a free guide that walks you through all of these elements and gives some pretty detailed examples. And if you have any questions or any topics you want to see us cover in future videos, be sure to drop that below in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future videos.